gracious and merciful God, on this sacred and solemn day, we come before you, flawed and fragile, having failed to be your faithful people. Create in us, we pray, clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. In the name of your undefeated love, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Most of us have favorite holy days in the church year. What is yours? Christmas might be at the top of the list, or Easter, Pentecost perhaps, maybe the Feast of All Saints. But are there any votes out there for Ash Wednesday as the favorite? Perhaps part of the reason Ash Wednesday is most likely at the bottom of the popularity poll is that on this day, on this day, the church speaks words of truth to us that are unwelcome, words we don't want to hear, words that make us tug at the collar and squirm in the pew, words which make us feel very uncomfortable. Our foreheads are smudged with ashes and, and we hear the sobering, stinging, troubling words, remember that you are dust, and, and to dust you shall return. Yes, Ash Wednesday bring up, brings us face to face with our sin and our mortality. It bids us to own up to our sin, and face the death to which sin leads us. St. Paul teaches the wages of sin is death. How we hate admitting our sin and facing our death. Recently driving down Route 1 I, I tooted my horn at, at a motorist who was getting dangerously close to the left side of my car. Then swerving in front of me, he directed an obscene gesture at me. Evidently, that motorist thought it was my fault that he cut me off. It certainly couldn't have been his. And there are times when I act the same way, not with the obscene gesture, mind you, but, but not, wanting, not wanting to admit that I've done something wrong, not wanting to admit my fault. We try constantly to wiggle out of taking responsibility for our sins and our failings. But at every Mass, most especially today at this Ash Wednesday Mass, and throughout Lent, we confess our fault. We say the words of confession and repentance. But let's make sure we mean them that they are spoken from the heart. Is our confession 
is our repentance from our heart? Do we repent of our sins with utter seriousness and with complete sincerity? And then, having heard of God's forgiveness, do we genuinely resolve, genuinely resolve to change our ways? To better be God's child. Remembering our sins, remembering our limitations, remembering our mortality, repenting, denying self, fasting, taking up Jesus' cross, sacrificing. These are the unpleasant themes of Ash Wednesday and Lent. and how we might wish we could avoid them. Let's skip, let's skip to Easter. Who needs Ash Wednesday? Who needs Lent? Well, each year, the same answer comes whispering back to me. God's Spirit says, you do. You do. I need Ash Wednesday and I need Lent to ask myself where the meaning for my life ultimately comes. And if God is not my answer, then God calls me to use Lent to recenter to recenter what I should treasure, God, to reorient my life to God, to reground myself in the God who gives my life and yours its ultimate meaning. The God, the God who alone gives life. life even beyond death. Who else or what else to which to give our trust and allegiance can do that for us? So yes, I need Ash Wednesday and Lent. We all do. In order for us to do some spring cleaning, Lent is a season to get our spiritual house in order, to ask ourselves what sins grip your heart and mine, and resolve to work diligently to sweep them away. Cleaning up our lives, spring cleaning, Lenten cleaning, means discarding favorite sins, turning away from self-centeredness, giving up long-held grudges, turning away from prejudices, any and all sins that keep us from a healthy relationship with God, sins that crowd God out of our hearts and our lives. Doesn't every house have a junk drawer or is mine the only one? You know what I mean. That drawer, most likely in the kitchen, that is filled with junk. Sometimes to the point the, the drawer will no longer close. Well, our souls have a junk drawer also. And let bids us to clean it out, to clean out the junk. Lent is here to help us rid our hearts and our lives of whatever, of whatever grieves the heart of God, the junk. We need Ash Wednesday and the Lent 
which it begins. So that in order for us to again survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, died for you and me. And to resolve anew that this love of God, so amazing and so divine, that love demands my soul and my life and my all. Ash Wednesday and Lent remind us of whose we are. We talked about that last Sunday when we celebrated baptism, that we are God's own possession and we are God's treasure. So yes, today our foreheads are crossed with ashes, the symbol of our sin and our death. But let us remember also that our foreheads were first crossed, first crossed at our baptism, crossed with holy oil, when the priest spoke our name and then spoke these words over us. Child of God, You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. That was the day God claimed us as his very own and called us by name and said, you are mine. And I will be with you forever. And so we can, we can confess our sin unabashedly because we know God's forgiveness awaits us. For we know we belong to the merciful Lord of love and life. We can admit our sin because the Lord of unbounded forgiveness has adopted us and called us child of God. Shortly, Christ's body and blood in this Holy Eucharist will bear eternal witness to that truth and that certainty. And so no, Ash Wednesday is not my favorite holy day, but yes, I need it, and you do also. I need to confess my sin and admit my mortality as the essential first steps, the first steps in returning to the Lord, my God, the God who is gracious and merciful, the God who abounds in steadfast love. And to hear also that wonderful good news today's psalmist proclaims, God forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. Mercy and loving kindness as the Good Friday and the Easter to which this Lent will deliver us bear everlasting testimony. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.